Hi guys, this is Unders and this is going to be part three of the Getting to Know Alchemy series. Now if you're finding these videos particularly helpful, please subscribe to the channel and pop a like on the video. It helps me out loads in creating the videos and guiding the content to the right sort of people in the right areas. So what we were looking at in the past two was just getting used to working our way around alchemy and then we looked at the subtractive side of it. Going to look into the more important and more in-depth stuff that alchemy has to offer now. So alchemy also offers additive synthesis as part of its package of one hell of a synthesizer. Now additive synthesis is a little bit different to subtractive. Subtractive will give us a complex, wa complex waveform and let us take parts away from it using filters, EQ, um, combining the two, that, that sort of thing, working with volume, like I said, we, when we were looking at saw what squares, triangles, they're complex waveforms with lots of harmonics. Subtractive is the most common form of synthesis. Additive is probably the one of the least common ones you're going to find. Alchemy is one of the ones I know of. Equally, Razor from Native Instruments, that's a type of additive synthesis. It has an additive engine, but it gives you sort of a subtractive front because they're generally easier to work with. So they've sort of gone here. We can do the whole additive thing, but here's something you're familiar with and you know you can work with. Harmer does a similar thing. That's from ImageLine. It's Windows only, unfortunately. It's one of my favorite plugins to uh, to use. That has a similar approach. It's a bit more in-depth than Razor. But it's built on, it's sort of a hybrid engine, but it fundamentally it is an additive engine. There's also Morphine from ImageLine, which is similar to what we're going to see today in Alchemy. So if you've got access to that, but perhaps not Alchemy, you can have a look at that. Difference being Morphine has 128 partials. This gives you access to, I want to say, 224 times 4, which is phenomenal. Now... What we do, we just make sure this has been initialized up here. Now to get get it into where we want to be for additive, we're normally going to be on global up here. If we click on A, which is currently on SOAR up here, and we can see we've got additive engine here. If we turn it on, boom, it changes from SOAR on the left hand side up here to additive. Now, we're not really going to hear anything, it's just going to be a sine wave. Incorrect, it's still going to be the saw wave. Now, if we go into edit and additive, there we go, we should just have a sign in theory. Unless I've left the oscillator on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Why weren't you behaving before? Okay. So, you should, you should be able to hear, I'll just bump it up an octave. That, it's just essentially a sine wave. Nothing special at all. Now, you see here, oh, 284 partials it offers, so I was even wrong in my math there. But, each one of these numbers corresponds to an operator, partial, or if you like, an oscillator. It's like having 284 sine waves. Uh, the theory behind this is that any sound can be created using sine waves. So you put multiple signs together, that would allow us to create a rich string sound, for example. And that does work, but figuring out what they're all gonna be independently by yourself is also very confusing. And for example, if we had to take the first partial here and let's go around the 12 mark here, it's going to create other harmonics that we can mathematically predict, but we wouldn't really be able to do in the heads and understand. It's created quite a harsh, but almost like metallic tone there. If we start creating partials all the way up here, they're also going to create other harmonics further down. That's all well and good. You could just go and draw a load of crazy partials, 
Make yourself some crazy noises. And you could work like that over and over. And you can have it, so if you create another one down here, you can create the changes over time. And we can do that one. That That's great. You can do that if you want, and you can create all kinds of unique sounds there. No one else is going to be able to create exactly the same odds. I mean, the odds of doing that are, are absolutely unfathomable. I just quickly wave that around there, and then I might just do that. I mean, the chance that you'd be able to mimic that exactly, not, not great. This is all well and good, but not particularly useful because you would spend forever dialing in partials and trying to work everything out and it's not gonna work for you. Where this comes massively into play is sampling or using samples. The astute of you would have noticed I've already got a load of Juno samples lined up on the right hand side here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna close the edit window, which do this up here and I'm just gonna default it again. We are gonna go and click on the operator here. So click on where it says saw we're going to choose import audio down here in the bottom left it's currently on spectral with formant highlighted we're going to pop that onto additive and i'm just going to drag this juno sub c1 note over what we're going to do we're going to import that alchemy is going to work out one that it's a c1 two that it wants it in additive Brilliant, we see that's happened, okay. Now, we see it says Juno sub one up here. You're thinking, okay, so it's put a sample in and now it's gonna play back a sample. Wrong. What it's done is recreate the sample with the partials that we were looking at before. There we go, we zoom that in a bit there. So those are the partials that create that sound at those particular levels. What that then allows us to do is completely edit that sound. So, that, that is being generated in real time. You can go main here and you can see representation of the sample, but it's actually being made by these partials and alchemy's worked out how it's going to generate that using the partials there are all manner of things you can then look at doing so you can adjust the tune and how it changes over time you can adjust the pan and how that is affected over time you can adjust the phase and how that is affected over time so you see how the programming this from scratch would take you forever, but it's completely possible. Ideally, what you would do is what I've just done here. You'll take a sound that you sort of want or sort of is in the right sort of scope, bring it in, and then you can edit it and go nuts, do absolutely everything you want with. But equally, where we looked in the video on the subtractive side, all of those things still play in. Another nice thing about the uh, additive section, actually, we get this real-time spectrogram. That's something that you would have seen on Harma and Razor as well. So you can actually see what's going on. This is a pretty bassy tone, so we see most of the activities at the bottom and the clicky bits are really faded up here. It's some fairly heavy notes and we can see what's going on there. Yeah, this can be rooted in exactly the same way. So here we're looking specifically at this operator. It's in additive mode. We can see what's going on. You can adjust the harmonics of it. You can add this in here and you can do like the breathe, stretch, shift sounds. They all have very different characteristics. I won't have time to tackle them in this video, but I will tackle them in the next one and what they do to the sound. Um, equally spread and auto pan options that we can have a look at. Um, that, that is pretty much it guys. So. 
that's how to get a sound into the additive engine, how you can play with it and edit it. So once it's in here, it's the edit window here, additive section, and you can play with all the different partials. One real quick thing to note, actually, if we go down here, the slide and stretch is going to be applicable to some of the effects we look at. The detail here, it's not going to affect this sound too much, but if you're doing things like uh, strings that have got lots of high content, having that detail up really helps, but it is quite a drain on, uh, on alchemy. Fab, so... That is it guys, if you want to keep going into this and we want to have a look more at what we can do with the additive side of it, follow on to the next video. Thank you very much.